they're able to teach. And how many years have you taught? <laughs> I mean, it's been a lot more than 30? 30? So he's taught for 30 years. And once again, can we give a hand for the man of God for 30 years? I read this quote, the best teachers are those who show you where to look, but don't tell you what to see. And sometimes, you know, sometimes teachers can get into you and they can say, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this, without really showing you how or why you need to do that. But this one, he can, he can open up the scriptures, he can show you what God's word says and make it applicable to your life so that you can go home and say, you know what, I need to go back and read what he said. Let me figure out, is what he said true or not true, or how can I implement this in my life? You know, he has that ability with his teaching gift to make the word relevant to our lives. And so, you know, for that, I honor you for that, because you are faithful in the ministry of doing 30 years worth of just serving faithfully in the teaching ministry. Not getting the drunkenness. I've never seen him drinking alcohol in beverage. <laughs> maybe he has, maybe he's you know, I've never seen him drink. He's not violent, but gentle. Once again, he's been kind. He's always shown kindness to me, to my family, to everyone that I've been around. He's always shown kindness. Not quarrelsome. He's not aggressive or has a fighting attitude. Not a lover of money. And I, I've never seen him ask for money. I've never seen him say, you know, you need to give me money because I'm the pastor. I'm the teacher. You need to do this. I spent too much time with this, and you need to pay me. He's never done that. I've never seen him do I've never heard him ask for money. You know, if anything, I've seen him give money. I've seen him give to other people to serve other people. And, and for that, I honor you. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. He mustn't do so in a manner worthy of full respect. And this is something that's kind of personal for me, you know, because, and I hope this is okay, but, you know, there were things that happened to me. I come from a blended family. And so there were things that happened before I was even born that I had no control over that was, was done, you know. But it's all been covered under the blood. But in the midst of that, this man here, he took on the responsibility of caring for my, my other siblings, whom I'm, I'm still close to today. You know, he saw a need, and he was willing to get down and say, you know what, I'm coming to be a husband, yeah. I'm coming to be a father, mm -hmm. and I'm going to serve you, and I'm going to serve you. Yeah. And, and it's... <laughs> <laughs> Brother, get emotional up there, but I probably wouldn't be here today had it not been for the impact of this man and or his influence in my life. And he may not know this, you know, but me and my brother are close. If anybody knows that me and my brother Randall, like we're, we're like this, I love my brother. He's always been an encourager. Ever since I was young, he's always encouraged. I was a little brother. He's always encouraged me. You know, he's always in church. Always bring me over here. Like, we didn't have a youth group at my church. And so, you know, he knew the importance of being around like-minded people. He knew the value of being connected to the body of Christ. And he knew the importance of being connected with people who are your age. They can relate to where you're at. Can encourage you to keep stepping out in faith. And, uh... He'd always bring me. He'd always bring me to this house because it was a vibrant youth group. And uh, he would always, when I went to college, I was still, I was a mess. You know, I, was, I wasn't living righteously. I wasn't living for God. I wasn't doing the things that the Bible teaches, even though I've been around it all my life. But he would always be that one consistent person in my life that would always be there to encourage me, lift me up. He would send me things in the mail at school to encourage me, little gift baskets and little words of, you know, uh, devotionals and things like this. And at the time, I didn't appreciate them. You know, at the time, I'm like, oh, got another Bible. <laughs> oh, and then he'd do a little acronym, and I'm like, A-S-K. You know, he'd say something, and I'm like, that. I didn't want to hear it at the time. But he was consistent in doing that, and I, I wonder, like, why? Why was he consistent in doing it? Because he saw something. He wanted to reach out to me and say, you're my, even though you're my little brother, I want you to be my brother in Christ. And I want your soul just as valuable as mine. I want you to be saved too, bro. And so he, 
so little did I know that those little seeds being planted were seeds that were going to grow into the man of God that I am today. Those were going to be the seeds that kept me in faith when times got hard. Those were going to be the seeds that were planted that were going to grow to cause me to be able to stand before you today and to honor a man that had that impact because of his influence in my brother's life. Mm -hmm. You know, had he not been the faithful servant that he was, had he not been committed to his wife through the years that they were going through, had he not done any of those things, I don't know if my brother would be the man that he is today. And I don't know if he would have been the encourager that he was to me to influence me. Amen. So by extension, thank you for being the man of God and for, for living a life. Basically, yeah. committed to the body of Christ.